Selections are a very important aspect in Photoshop, and in Photoshop CS4, there are many methods of creating selections. And in this video, I'm going to show you not only how to create a selection, but how to modify them as well. On the left hand side in our toolbar, we have a few ways of creating selections. We can start off with the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. These are very simple selection methods. Basically, all you have to do is select which tool you want and drag your mouse to create a selection. As you'll notice, it creates either a square or a rectangle. If you hold down your shift key, it will constrain it to a perfect square. And the same thing applies for the elliptical marquee tool. You can have it as an ellipse, or if you hold down your shift key, you can constrain it as a circle. Once you have your selection made, you can move your mouse inside the selection and move the selection around to your liking. To deselect any selection that you have, you can go to select and then click on deselect or use the shortcut key control D on a PC or command D on a Mac. Again, once you have your selection made, you have a few options that you can do. At the top here, we have a few buttons. We have our new selection button. So if we have a current selection and we start dragging our mouse, it will create a brand new selection disregarding the old selection. If we select our second button, we can add to that selection. As you notice, when we drag our mouse, it adds to the selection that we had before. We can subtract from our selection, or we can intersect our selection, which kind of acts as a cookie cutter, as you can see right here. In our options bar, we have a few more options. Under the style drop-down menu, we can choose to create our selection at a fixed ratio or a fixed size. So let me go ahead and grab my rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to choose fixed ratio and set it to 4 by 3. And anything I drag out in my document, the selection will constrain to a 4 by 3 ratio, just like that. But if you also know the exact size that you want to create your selection at, we can go ahead and select fixed size and then enter our dimensions to the right. If you want to change the measurement, right click in the box and then select the measurement you want. So I'm going to select 400 by 600 and all I have to do is click in my document and it will create a selection that's 400 pixels wide by 600 pixels high. Very, very simple. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the other selection methods that Photoshop has to offer. Let's head over to the left again to our tools palette or toolbar and we're going to start with the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool is an extremely simple selection method. It's basically a freehand selection method. So if you have a tablet or a very steady hand, the lasso tool you might want to look into. But basically you drag your mouse or your tablet, create your selection and then let go and there's your selection. Super simple, but it's not very accurate. Again, you have to have a very steady hand or a tablet to really take advantage of the lasso tool. The next tool in the list is the polygonal lasso tool, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It creates selections from straight edges. So if you have a straight edged object in your photo that you want to make a selection of, you can use the polygonal lasso tool. You simply click your mouse once to start the selection, and then click in the areas that you want to create your selection just like this, and there are two ways to complete a selection. You can either move your mouse to the beginning of the selection and then click to complete it, or you can double click anywhere in the image and it will complete the selection for you. And that's the polygonal lasso tool. The last tool in this list is the magnetic lasso tool, and this uses similar colors and straight edges to define your selection. What you have to do is click your mouse and then start dragging, and you'll notice it's snapping to straight edges and similar colors. But again, you have to be pretty steady handed in order for this to be very accurate. And once you run into similar colors that are not part of the same object, as you can see here, it will start snapping to those colors as well. So it's not incredibly accurate unless you have a very defined contrasted photo where the main object that you're trying to select is pretty separated from the background. And that's the magnetic lasso tool. We're going to now move on to the magic wand tool, which can be found right over here. Now the magic wand tool uses similar colors like the magnetic lasso tool, but if used properly, it's a little bit more accurate. Basically what you have to do is you need to figure out what color you want selected. So let's say we want to select the blues in this clothespin. We're going to start by clicking once to make our initial selection. You'll notice that it's starting to select the blue and similar colors, but it's not a very big defined selection. Now at the top in our options bar, we have something called tolerance. And basically the lower the tolerance value, 
the less of the color will be selected. So as you can see here, I clicked once and it only selected the blue and a few similar blues in that clothespin. But if I increase it to let's say 32 and then click again, it will select more of the blues in the clothespin. And just like our other selection methods, we can add or subtract from the selection. So if you want to start selecting more of the blues, you can either select the second button here or hold down your shift key. You'll notice a little plus sign appears next to our cursor. And we can click like this and it will start to select more of our blue colors. Just like that. And again, increase or decrease the tolerance value to your liking so you can select as accurate as possible. Now if you are a fan of the magic wand tool, you may also consider checking out the quick selection tool which can be found with the magic wand tool right over here. Basically when Adobe releases a new version of Photoshop, they tend to release new features that are similar to the old features but work a little bit better. This is how the quick selection tool works. At the top you're going to select your brush size and very simply drag your mouse over the object you want to select. It will automatically select all the colors and hues that are similar in the areas that you dragged on top of. It's very great, very simple, and it's pretty damn effective. Now there are two other selection methods which I could cover, using the pen tool to create a selection and the quick mask mode selection method. Now because the pen tool is extremely difficult and complex, the pen tool and how it's used is going to be saved for another video. And to finish off this video, I'm going to show you the last selection method, and that's the quick mask mode selection method. Now to access quick mask mode, all you have to do is press the, the Q key on your keyboard, or at the bottom of the tools palette, press this button right here, which will switch you into quick mask mode. Mode. Now once in quick mask mode, we're going to select our brush tool right there and all we have to do is brush the area that we want selected. And just like using our brush normally, at the top in our options bar we have all of our options to adjust the brush size and hardness and all you have to do is start brushing on top of the area that you want selected. You'll notice that a red overlay appears on your image. Don't worry that red will not show up in the image, that just shows you what's being selected with the quick mask mode. So once you have your selection finished, press the Q key again to revert out of quick mask mode and you'll notice that we now have a selection. Now the advantage of using quick mask mode and this selection method is you get very nice smooth selections. So now that we've covered how to create a selection in Photoshop minus using the pen tool to create a selection, I'm going to show you how to modify a selection. Now there are multiple ways of doing this. We can either go up to the top and click on select, go down to modify, and then click on the option that we want. We can click on border, which will add a nice border around our selection. As you can see here, if I enter a value of let's say 20, click OK, we have a border around our selection, just like that. If we undo, go back to select, modify, smooth will smooth out the edges, but we have a pretty nice smooth selection here. If you are using something like the polygonal lasso tool to create a selection, you may consider smoothing the edges out using the smooth modifier. We can expand our selection, so if we expand it, let's say by 50, it will grow larger. We can contract our selection, which will do the opposite. So if we contract it by, let's say, 20, it will get smaller. And we can also feather our selection, which will soften out the edges of our selection, so anything that you fill inside of it will have nice soft edges. Now alternatively, you can use the Refine Edge dialog box, which gives you the option to do everything at once. So you can adjust the radius, the contrast, the smooth, feather, contract, expand, anything like that, and you can see the final result in real time right in front of you. So that's definitely one option you should look into. So that's pretty much about it for selections in Photoshop CS4, again minus the pen tool to create a selection. Because the pen tool is so complex, we, I will do a separate video on the pen tool alone which will cover selections as well. So stay tuned for the next video.